before that the robot can replace the item. And so it would have been better, in my opinion, to create a robot that had the capability uh, to remove the fabric to begin with. And so um, we'll demonstrate that to you here. But again, blankets are bad because you just don't, you know, it's not a rigid object. And so you don't have, uh, it's not easily, it's not easily understood as to where the object is going to uh, be in space. And so there's an envelope under it. So not only is a, a blanket a floppy object, but, but so is an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> Another important uh, aspect is being able to use the robot and use the sensors that are available to it. So this robot right now is, is uh, performing some machine algorithms on this envelope, waiting for me to take it from it. So you have to embed a certain amount of intelligence into the, into the robot system in order for it to be a usable product. And so we've also um, uh, given considerable thought into how to actually build up those primitives, those behaviors that can be stacked together in order to do tasks. So after you move things around, you also need to be move things around that way more than an envelope does. And, uh, and again, going back to what I was saying previously, uh, a key determinator of this system is, is how much weight it can move for its size. And uh, if you look at other systems um, from across the way, you're going to see payloads on the single, uh, the single kilogram uh, level, you know, one or two, one or two kilos. And what we're able to do, and actually, I'd like my lovely assistant to come out here <laughs> with the weight. <laughs> and uh, he's actually, a volunteer. Yeah. Or we could use a volunteer. <laughs> so, uh, so, pound for pound, this robot doesn't have as much strength capability as a human being. Uh, muscles are very well engineered devices for how much they weigh. And uh, we're gonna, it's going to be a while until we have uh, actuation devices that rival the strength of a human. However, one advantage that we have over humans is we have an endurance level, or robots have an endurance level that far exceeds, uh, that far exceeds humans. And I'll attempt to demonstrate a little bit of that right now. <laughs> so we're going to do a weightlifting demo. This is 20 pounds. And... Uh, we're going to show you that the robot's able to manipulate it around with relative ease, but we're also going to put it in configurations that everyone knows and while you're watching this are going to be rather painful. And so, <laughs> and so that'll kind of highlight the, uh, the idea that I'm trying to get across. So that, that hand in particular is, is, a, is, a, is a hand that can manipulate a blanket, it can handle an envelope, and it can also hold 20 pound weight. And so this part's pretty easy, right? I mean, it's just standard. You just get in the gym, you pick up your, your, pick up your dumbbell, and you start doing some curls, right? You kind of feel it growing a little bit, but you're still feeling pretty good about yourself. And then you see like you know this, this cute person across the way. You want to start showing off a little bit. <laughs> and so you. Uh, <laughs> so Adam, Adam's a pretty big guy, right? <laughs> and so Adam's a pretty big guy, and he, he can manipulate the weight fine. But when we pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> For Adam to keep going. And I won't kill him. Hold so, it, man. Hold it. So let's keep going uh, before we take him to the hospital with a hernia. And uh, just to show you that, yes, we don't have actuators that can lift as much as Adam can for how much Adam weighs, but without any effort, we can exceed his endurance. And that's a very important point, is that robots tend to do things really, really well that we do. <laughs> And so finally, when you have a system that moves like a human and uh, has the dexterity that rivals a human and can have the safety system that 
uh, you feel comfortable working here <coughs> and can do tasks and manipulate weight, it's got to be friendly as well. And so, I should keep this off. Because in the end, you know, we're not looking to create Pal or the Terminator. <laughs> Some of us are. Yeah. Um, in the end, we've got to create devices that are that are pleasant to be around and that, that are friendly for people to interact with. And so I'm going to give the robot a handshake because it did a really good job today. And, uh, and I'll open it up and allow you guys to ask some questions and even get a few handshakes for time. <laughs> But actually, I'll introduce this. Uh, again, this, this, this handshake also highlights a few of the other technologies that I was speaking about earlier. Um, it has, the robot's going to sense the force of me gripping the hand. And when I start, when I initiate a handshake, just kind of when you walk up to someone, you initiate a handshake, somebody starts pumping first, right? And so you kind of got this leader follow <coughs> action that kind of, kind of starts. And so, <laughs> and uh, it's a hand. <laughs> But uh, you know that, that again, that, 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 te that technology, that intrinsic technology, that allows it to kind of feel, you know, that allows it to kind of understand the forces that are being imparted on it and the forces that it imparts on the environment, is the, is the core of the system.